excited. <laughs> so All right, so good morning and thank you for joining us today. This is Kathy for Getting Chatty with Kathy. And I just wanna thank you for spending a little time with us. Um, we have a lovely guest today. Um, I met Amanda when my daughter was just a little one. She was probably five, she's 10 now. And she loved Amanda as a teacher. I've never seen my kids connect with somebody like that. It was definitely really special. Um, the lady is called, I have to start again. I can't say the lady is called. <laughs> That's okay. No, I, I know it's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just start again. Watch this. Neat. Okay, I'll do it like that. It was so early on, I was like, well, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning, this is Kathy for Getting Chatty with Kathy. And I wanna thank you for joining us today. We have a lovely guest today with us. Her name is Amanda Ryshinsky. Um, she has made a name for herself as a yoga guru, a fabulous teacher, and she definitely is a strong proponent of community here in Regina. And I can't thank you enough for having a voice that's so positive and always a pleasure to talk to you. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kathy. <laughs> well, I would just like to tell everybody how I met Amanda. I met Amanda many moons ago when my daughter was around five. Um, she was going to St. Pius kindergarten and she spent the year with Miss, Miss Ryshinsky and then the next year she was lucky enough to get you again. And it was like during COVID and you had just this grace about you all the time with our kids that kept them positive and they, they went through COVID with, I, I can't believe how lucky I was for her to have you as a teacher <laughs> because you were able to make her feel safe during a time where there was a lot of questions going on. And I think that that attitude that you have is carried through in all of your life. I always feel safe with you, whether it's a yoga class or whatever. So thank you for giving us that space. Absolutely. Yeah, I love sharing my energy with others and, and just receiving that back from, from the community, whoever I connect with. So, Well, we always find Amanda Ryshinsky's yoga posts on our Facebook, and it always is with a group of people that just, I feel like, are sending out you know, good energy everywhere, and you've created a little community, I feel like. Yes, um, so I, I finally found my passion in this. I, I mean, I believe that teaching has been my passion uh, all along. Um, I just finished uh, 15 years of teaching for Regina Catholic Schools. Uh, so yeah, along the way, I've always been trying to discover myself and allowing that to unravel, um, just noticing that I needed to express myself through being active and also being creative uh, and being busy as a teacher and, and especially life and how things were just so much momentum and speed in everyone's life leading up to before everything was shut down during COVID. It was hard to find those times to create and I would find times to be active and go to yoga classes myself and train for triathlons and I've always found that to be a release and help helped me through a lot of uh, trauma and uh, just dealing with my own own things on a daily basis so then I was just naturally drawn to uh, falling into yoga a little bit deeper with certain yoga teachers just inspiring me uh, Charlotte Weber at Kwan's Hot Yoga and Jason Szynski at Bodhi Tree. I would go to their classes and I was, I thought at first I was just going to stretch out my two hour jog <laughs> that I needed for my hips and my knees. And, uh, but then they took it to another level for me and started, I started to crack open emotionally, mentally, and then just connecting with my 
true self, that soul self, that, that spiritual layer. So that really changing my life and then being drawn to yoga teacher training. And then just, I happened to be interested in Reiki healing. <laughs> um, just out of nowhere, I was at Wilkie Wellness Center that's no longer here, they are in Lumsden uh, still but just was there for a yoga class and then saw this Reiki level one training and then it changed my life. You know, when I've been in your yoga classes at Kwan's, I'm lucky enough to live a couple blocks away and I knew Amanda was teaching on Sunday nights, which is really a perfect thing for me to chill out before the week starts. And my, the best memory I have, I haven't done it in a little while, was you allowed me to bring Nora into the classroom with me. And Nora is my daughter, she probably was like eight or nine at the time, and she is a big emotion, she has big emotions. And so having her be able to sit there in a yoga class where you bring Reiki into it, she got her crystal that grounded her when she sat there. And she sat there for that whole class, just hip hypnotized by you. So yeah, it's just beautiful to be able to bring the two together, yoga yeah. and Reiki. And so it was in, I think the summer of 2021, I just thought, why don't we put yin and Reiki? Yin a more just um, passive, deep stretch, longer held posture practice can be very relaxing. Um, then while people are in those postures, just coming around and, and doing Reiki healing. Uh, so yeah, it's just beautiful. And then just in, it's just become expansive, the yoga and the Reiki into the community, working with whoever. Uh, I love co collaborating. So if anybody on here hears this and they have an idea for any type of healing or creating or just, yeah, helping with the school or helping in the yoga studio, um, reach out to me. I, I love connecting. I believe working together is stronger, not separately, right? I yeah. wholeheartedly agree. And as a community, doing things together kind of makes our community better and brighter. Right. How does it feel, though? So to me, you kind of have, like, the teacher side of you, and then you have the, you know, teaching of yoga. Um, how does it feel when you're switching between maybe adults and children? So... Teaching at school is, a, is different because there's a, a curriculum to follow and the structure is different. Um, their students, I guess, are choosing to come to school, but also they're being, you know, it's expected of them to come as well. So sometimes there's challenges there where they don't want to be there. Um, when, when people come to the yoga studio, they're choosing to be there. They want to be there. Uh, but I, I do notice that they align and I have real conversations with grade one, grade two students. Uh, I don't talk down or I don't no. talk in a baby voice. We have discussions just you like You treat I them would. like a person. Right, yeah, and, and they're ready for it. If you show them that you believe that they are ready for it, they, they are ready for it. So uh, just having those those even life discussions randomly throughout teaching in the day has just been so beautiful um, with students. Those are those teachable moments. But uh, I, I used to see it as a division. My uh, career as a, a teacher in elementary school and then with my yoga and Reiki, but now I'm starting to see them fuse together, which they should. Um, just the, the past year at school, just a lot of shifts, a focus from the Ministry of Education and also our school division on mental health and wellness now has kind of given us given us the go ahead to really run with this and focus on that as, as the base foundation for anything and then add in academics with the math and the That's <laughs> yeah, the way to literacy. do it though. I don't think without emotional intelligence and understanding how to take care of it, we can be healthy. When I went through school, mental health wasn't even a conversation. If you took right. medication for mental health, you were kind of like, like looked at side-eyed. So I really think nowadays, and lots of people coming out and talking about it has g generally given the mental health world a go-ahead and 
I, I wonder how that reflects like when you look back in the 15 years of your education. Do you feel that the students that now are being prepared in this different way, do you think they're going to come out of their education system better off? I think it will just be different. I don't know if it's better, but I think it's just that um, transparency and being open and to express your, your true self and hopefully being able to cultivate that before they move into adulthood and and then not figuring that out once they're 30 or 35, figuring it out sooner. Um, so just trying to hold space for them and knowing that whatever comes up for them, we're, it's a safe space and, and we'll try to understand or at least work through things with them. Uh, it's, but I do see a shift just in, in students in general and their awareness. We even had a discussion this past year just about eating healthy and then also keeping our brain healthy, our heart healthy, right? And a few of my students expressed about, you know, it, oh yeah, I go to therapy. I was just, I was angry and I just, it's helped. And and they're just talking about it all nonchalant. Like it's it's just a thing. It's beautiful. Yeah, so it's just in grade two. This is just beautiful that um, they're able to share this open, openly and have that awareness. Awareness is key. Uh, when I was younger, I was dealing with the social anxiety, but I didn't know that that was a thing. Like I thought everybody was just went through this, right? And so then later on in life, realizing that that's what I had and, and it was causing a lot of problems and me turning to things that weren't good for me. Uh, so if we can cultivate those tools, for these students now, then they won't have to feel like they need to escape their lives or cope using self-destructive things. It's preventative medicine. Exactly, really. like we need to start, yeah, at, the, at their young age, they're ready. They're just like sponges. Um, and teaching them those skills to take a step back, take a breath. Yes. Be present with where you are is so key nowadays with all of these distractions. I feel like constantly we're at the whim of like the internet, our cell phone calling, our, you know, all of these different things that we're just never even just where we are. Right. And when you start practicing this at a young age, just being still and being present, it just becomes a part of who you are and a part of your nervous system. And you can rewire your nervous system. I've done it. I, I was on meds for anxiety. I no longer am on anything. I take vitamins, but yeah, but I know what works for me. So it's about in, encouraging and helping everyone at any age how to find something that works for them. And that's why I've just been so inspired from my journey to help others. And, and I see that happening in my yoga classes or when somebody comes for a few Reiki sessions and then they're starting to crack open to themselves. And it's just so beautiful to see them healing through so many layers. It's hard, I think, for people in our generation to really feel comfortable talking about things. I think we were raised to just stiff up our lip and yes. obviously that's not the way that we should roll. I myself had to spend some time in the hospital because I got overwhelmed and I overdid it and I didn't take care of myself. And I never really knew that I wasn't taking care of myself until I was like, right, too far. Yes. And then you need to step back and reevaluate and see what your priorities and understand that there are tools out there to make you feel healthy and happy, whether it's medicine, whether it's breathing differently, whether it's, being present, there's so many different things. Well, and what I've really come to discover is that everything you need to heal yourself is already within you. So it, I just really want to help everyone find, find that, that within mm -hmm. themselves because we are so influenced by everything around us, social media, peers, our parents, our family, right? right. And, and just when we can connect with ourselves and ground into that, then we don't waver into all these different things that aren't meant for us. We just are sure of ourselves and we know ourselves. So it doesn't matter what comes our way, we're able to handle it. We're still gonna have things that aren't the greatest in life, that's just inevitable, but it's your reaction, your perspective, and just how you're able to approach it that makes the difference. 
not sitting in that fear or doubt or shame and just leaning into compassion for yourself and accepting yourself. So have you always felt that way or is this like been a big process? This is a huge, yeah, this has been a huge shift for me because I, I would sit in those feelings of not being enough or those high expectations, which I feel like society is always putting on everyone, uh, even in your workplace or your family, or there's always, you, you just live up to one expectation and then, oh, there's another one and it never seems to be like enough. So that's kind of the energy I was in. And now I'm just softer with myself and it takes practice. It's not just going to one yoga class or one Reiki session or whatever it is that that you resonate with that'll fix you instantly. You have to put the work in Mm -hmm. and you have to be ready. And it's when it comes down to it, it's it's your choice. Uh, So that's just where I, I was at. And I was just, I've always been a person that loves living and I love life, but certain things were just bringing me down. And I was like, I need to find a way to figure this out. And I'm just so grateful that these things just seem to magically kind of I don't think they're magically. I think that you, you know, (laughs) I feel like when one door closes, other doors open and I've witnessed it. And I think that you're allowing that in when you say no to other things and setting boundaries of what you like and what you don't like and what you're comfortable with and not. That's a hard thing to do, especially if you don't have that strong foundation of yourself and it takes you a long time to get there. But in my growth and in my life, I feel like the older I get, having had those big hard things happen have brought me more to myself because I've had to really reflect. Absolutely. So even when you are going through hard things, leaning into them, learning to lean into those things uh, because they will pass. And the the sooner you choose to, to lean into it, the sooner it will pass and just accepting what's, what's happening. And I love how you talk about boundaries because that has always been something, especially recently, just that awareness of me setting healthy boundaries because I love to give, I love to pour my energy out, but through my Reiki practice and yoga, it's helped me to find that balance. I can give, but still protect my energy and and also receive energy. Yeah, fill that cup. Yeah, exactly. So I just, I wasn't used to that and it will feel unfamiliar and it will feel awkward and, but you have to just push yourself out of that com- comfort zone if you want different results, right? Yes. And yeah. I find like when we push ourselves to do things, like this is my year of yes, honestly. So whenever stuff comes up my way and I'm like, mm-hmm. I really want to say yes to it because I feel like for a long time, at home we were just getting comfortable and I'm like this is so boring so it's shake been, it up shake yeah. it up say yeah. yes and I tell you it brings so much vibrance into my life now just in one year I'm now you know doing a lot of different things that I never would have thought I would and I feel like leaning into that just letting it be and trusting that the journey is going to get us to wherever it should go has really put a lot of weight off my shoulders and expectations in myself Right, exactly. And and you feel it once you've done it a, enough times, you feel the things that you're being drawn to that are meant for you. You can feel when it's off and when it's like feels yeah. right. Trust it too. Yes. Yeah, and listen to that inner knowing. And that's just what I've learned to connect with and allowing your inner self to affect your outer rather than your outer affecting who you are inside and so it's a different vibration then so what you put out then you're just naturally going to draw those things into your life whether it's good or bad I try not to label things as good or bad we're all just experiencing life and we all don't have it figured out right but we can talk about it and create spaces where people can be their true selves and express themselves fully. Everyone's different. What works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you or or other people, so. Do you find Saskatchewan is a safe place now more than it has been? I feel like it is, honestly. It definitely is, and I've seen that shift in in the school divisions um, as well, where I think it really starts there, like, schools have Education, so, so much influence and <laughs> that those are the the people that are 
posting things and having this influence on social media and uh so yeah i've seen that through just with the mental health but also just the acceptance of diversity and inclusion of everyone no mm -hmm. matter what your race no matter what your sexual orientation no matter no matter what and i i've seen that shift and I, it's just really hopeful uh and i'm just excited to be a part of it and be an influence in the school division well, I'm happy you're there and spreading that energy there because we needed it. We really did. So tell me a little bit about your business. You have a little side hustle I hear from your heart, from my heart to yours. Right. So um, I know through COVID, a lot of people, they suffered and it was, and I, I don't feel like I, I was in a place of suffering actually through that because I had worked through a lot of healing already. Uh, healing never ends. I still have healing to do and there'll be things that come up that will need healing, but it's just great when you can have tools <laughs> and pull and them tools. out and you need them. Yeah. Um, those things creep in still for me. I'm not fully, you know, I'm not saying that I, I fully am healed or have a, a beautiful day every day, but I try, try to bring it back to gratitude and catch myself when I do start to go off. And so that awareness awareness is key. I am actually, through those times in uh, 2020, I started writing a book um, titled Awareness, Acceptance, Action. <laughs> uh, so just those steps and yeah. they seem so simple, but just an understanding um, you do something is a big deal, right? Yeah, just being aware of what you're doing and then accepting it. Acceptance is really hard. A lot of people try to escape um, by, uh, yeah, just doing whatever, whatever it might be. It can be shopping. It could be, you know, just, yeah, just any, any behavior, um, where they just don't want to face it. So yeah, once you've accepted it, then it's a lot easier to take action. So um, do you put your good energy into the crystals then? So I do. So then I, I started, um, that so I started uh, doing yoga in the park in 2020 in the summer um, and then that led to in 2021 just I wanted to get back to creating so I set that as a goal uh, yeah. in January of 2021. It's to, important to have goals every year I've learned that through do it you'll be amazed because I create you feel vision like yeah I create yeah. vision boards and they've all come uh, like not the way that I thought, way, way that I thought they would come about, but they've all happened. You're, so you vision it, you make yeah. it happen, and you focus on that, and and then those things will come to you. So uh, yeah, so then I I started creating jewelry just randomly, I've never done it in my life, and then through this yoga and these private yoga events and just creating these these opportunities for myself, basically, I, I just thought why not create a business out of this because people I was posting my jewelry and they're like are these for sale and I'm like I guess I love it and if, yeah if you can't see right now they are just stunning colors mm -hmm. thank and, you and yeah they just feel yeah. good I made so I make uh bracelets and necklaces right now um and I do infuse them with the Reiki energy and I don't know if you remember um Declan from St. Pius um he has a rare disease mitochondrial disease um mighty declan there's a cause for him and and through that um one of the summers we actually raised 700 dollars at just an outdoor um yoga event for mitochondrial disease so then any i also any um charity that resonates with someone who purchases my my jewelry um, ten percent of sales goes to. I always like to choose mitochondrial disease, mental health, cancer. But if there's, I know there's diabetes or any, yeah, any other type of cause or charity, then I donate ten percent of the sales. See, um, you are truly an authentic community leader. Thank, thank you. <laughs> so, for the ending of our show today, um, um, one of the things that Amanda had talked about is chakra balancing because a lot of us are kind of disjointed in the way we connect with each other so we thought we would take a few minutes just to be present 
and have a moment. So I'm gonna leave it in her hands. Great. And at the end of it, we're just gonna end for the day. I'm not gonna say anything. I just want that to be our moment. So thank you for listening and you all take care out there. All right, so if uh, you're unfamiliar with chakras, uh, we have seven main chakras that run through the midline, the middle of our, our body. And we also have tons of other chakras and energy throughout our body, but it's, it's good to focus on the midline, uh, just that center point through the front and back body, through the spine. That's why you hear a lot of times in yoga, you want to open up that energy in the spine, warm up the spine, uh, and allow the energy, the prana in yoga is, is energy. That's what it's called. And then Ki, if you're talking about Reiki, it's all connected. So uh, just that life force energy, that breath. So we'll just work on opening those seven main chakras. Um, there's the crown at the top of your head. There's the third eye in the middle of your forehead. There's your throat, your heart, your belly is your solar plexus. So this is your gut, your intuition, inner knowing, also found in that third eye space. And then uh, your sacral and your root at the, at the base. So we'll flow from the top down and then back up again, just opening, cleansing, clearing, just imagining, maybe you see that light energy as we're flowing up and down and moving through. So you can do this in a seated position or lying down, but you might want to have your hands free. You can just visualize this, but you can also move your hands with me. So just um, listening to my voice as I guide you, let's just start by settling in, relaxing our body, maybe closing the eyes and just being aware of the space around you. So notice any simple things, just focusing on the sounds, just the energy in your space, and you can do this anywhere. Maybe just checking in with how you're feeling in this moment, right here, right now, no other time. just approaching yourself with love and acceptance no matter what comes up not labeling anything good or bad it's just happening checking in with the energy that you're carrying today starting to notice the breath just your natural inhales and exhales, where the breath is moving in the body, maybe the belly and the chest. And we'll start to deepen the breath just to calm your nervous system. Maybe you need to take yourself out of that fight or flight and into rest and digest. So deep inhale through your nose. And just take a sigh out the mouth, H-A. A couple more of those breaths at least. You can take as many of these as you need to really calm your nervous system. Slow everything down. You might imagine and just feel that expansion on the inhale. And that softening on the exhale, that grounded energy. Now we'll begin through that chakra meditation. So take a deep inhale. On the exhale, placing that right hand on the crown of your head, keeping it there, take another deep inhale. On the exhale, take the left hand, place it onto the forehead, keeping both hands where they are as you inhale again. On the exhale, remove that right hand from your head, bring it onto your throat. Inhale into these two chakras. On the exhale, left hand onto your heart. Just move at your own pace, no rush. Follow your breath as you inhale, exhale, right hand onto your belly, that solar plexus. Two major centers here, deep breath. 
Exhale, left hand under the right hand, sitting in that sacral, our identity, our sexuality. Deep inhale. Exhale, right hand comes on top of the left or even below, and we'll take a few breaths here, just sitting in that root. You might focus on a sensation, a light, a color, just moving from the hands, from that root, all the way up and through the midline of the body on the inhale to the crown. On the exhale, draw it back down and into the hands, even out through the root. You can spend as long as you'd like here, or maybe just a few breaths. You can do this on your own at any point in your day. And with that, we're going to say good night. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Wait. 29.15. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it goes by so fast. I know. I was like, Holy. oh, my gosh. I could, we could, this is where he's like, <laughs> I should do it for an hour. Because we could talk forever. Right. For sure. Yeah. Oh, you're so well-spoken, my